Mobile Switching Center, the MSC, as it stands for Process Requests for Services from Mobile Devices and Landline Callers as it routes calls between the base station on the Public Switching Telephone Network, the PSTN. The Mobile Switching Center receives the dial digits, creates and interprets call processing tones and routes the call via routing procedures to its path. The Mobile Switching Center, the MSC, is the heart of the GSM network. It handles call routing, call setting up, and basic switching functions. An MSC handles multiple base station controllers and also interface with other mobile switching centers and registers. It also handles inter base station controller handoffs as well as coordinates with other mobile switching centers for inter mobile switching centers handoff. And we spoke about the whole concept of handoff. As we see in this diagram here, we see the base stations that are being controlled by the base station controllers. The mobile switching centers is represented by a router because it route calls to the base station controllers and then back from the base station controllers to the mobile switching center and from the mobile switching center the base station controllers to the base stations to the mobile device. As you can see, these mobile switching centers also interconnect with other mobile switching centers especially when we want to treat with call processing operations or handoffs. The interface that used between the base station controllers and the mobile switching center is considered as the A interface. There is a gateway mobile switching center known as the gateway mobile switching center, the GMSC. It's another important type of mobile switching center called the gateway mobile switching service which functions is between two networks if a mobile subscriber wants to place a call to a regular landline then the call would have to go through the mobile or the gateway mobile switching center in order to switch the, to the public switching telephone network as you can see the mobile switching center communicates with the gateway mobile switching center to route calls to the PSTN network in this diagram. This diagram here demonstrates the differences between the two networks. Network A we could reference this as the B mobile network. Network B we could represent this as the Digicel network. As we could see that the PSTN network is connected to both gateways on the mobile switching centers to route calls from the A network to the B network in other words from the B mobile network to the Digicel network to interconnect these base station calls through the gateway mobile switching center through the public switching telephone network to route network calls from network A to network B. The mobile switching center, the MSC, is depicted by two routers as a route call processing operations and the interfaces between the mobile switching center is considered as the E interface. Now let's focus our attention to the aspect of the mobile system where the accounting, the money, the business component is introduced, otherwise known as the setup and cleanup codes. The accounting authorization and a authentication system otherwise known as the AAA are the process used in validating the claim identity of an end user of a device such as a host server switch or a router in a communication network. Authentication is needed in terms of validating the claim of an identity of a specific end device could be also an intermediate device too as well, host and server, switch or router in a communication network. Authentication is the process of exchanging information between a communication device, typically a user device such as a mobile phone or computing device, 
and the communication network that allows a carrier of a network operator to confirm the true identity of the user or the device. Authorization is the act of granting access rights to a user group of user system or processes. It is essentially important for you to differentiate the difference between authentication and authorization as authentication means the identification of the individual to confirm the person's true identity and as authorizations mean granting either rights or permissions to a group of user systems or process. The accounting aspect is a system which is a method to establish who and what performs certain actions such as tracking user connection and logging system users. The accounting aspect is for validating as well the method to establish who what performs a certain action such as tracking user connections and login system users. Then there are internet working functions which we are very familiar with. There is a system that process that attached to a communication network that is used to process and adapt information between dissimilar types of network systems. For example, the MSC connecting to the internet as you saw a diagram a little earlier that demonstrates the difference between the radio access network and so on. So the internet working functions in a mobile system may include data gateways such as the internet that be connected to the mobile switching center. Then there's a messaging control. We will speak about the concept of short messaging services, SMS. A center which is a node or network function with the communication network that accommodates messages being sent and received via this concept. Then we will talk about the concept of the Sylvan General Packet Radio supporting nodes that coordinates the operation of packet radios that are operating within the service coverage range of that cellular site or cellular coverage area. This SGSN Sylvan General Packet Radio service supporting node operates in a similar process of the mobile switching center and the visitor location register except it performs packet switching instead of circuit switching. These registers maintains a list of active packet data radios in the network and coordinates a packet transfer between mobile radios such as the internet. Then there's a gateway GPRS supported node which is a packet switching system that is used to connect GPRS packet data to other networks and the internet. The base station controller is an automatic coordinator or controller in a mobile system that allows one or more base station carriers to communicate with a mobile switching center and a packet data communication system. The base station controller, sometimes known as the radio network controller, RNC, in a wide man CDMA system. Voice messaging system too, in terms of telecommunication systems, that allows the subscriber to receive and playback messages from a remote location, such as a PBX telephone or mobile phone. The voice messaging system constantly primary of memory storage for messages telephone interfaces to connect to the communication system and messages recording back using what you call DTFM tones. The public switch telephone network, the PSTN, networks are communication systems that are available to the public to allow users to interconnect communication devices. Public telephone networks within countries and regions are standard integrated circuits of transmission and switching facilities, signaling processes, and associated operations such as systems that allow communication devices to communicate with each other when they operate. When we show a diagram a little earlier how we connect the PSTN into our mobile switching center back to the mobile network. So there's also the public packet data network which is responsible for the internet transfer of packet data and is normally used for commercial use. Let's switch our function to network databases. For example, there are 
several types of network databases. The other one is known as the Home Location Register, the master subscriber, which is typically have one per network. Then there's a visitor location register, a temporary active user subscriber data database. This is where we could determine whether or not a user of a mobile phone is in a particular location or not. An unauthorized or suspected user database equipment register for those who are using SIM cards that are not belonging to them. A billing database in terms of the authentication and authorization and validation center. You will switch our function first on the home location register, otherwise known as the HLR. It's a subscriber database containing each customer international mobile subscriber identity, IMSI, and the international mobile equipment identify IMEI to uniquely identify each customer is housed in the home location register. There's usually only one home location register for each carrier, even though each carrier may have many mobile switching centers. Some of the functions of the HLR holds each customer user profile, which includes the selected long distance carrier, call and restrictions, service fee charge rates, and other selected network operations. The subscriber can change and store the changes for some features, options in the HLR, such as call forwarding. The MSC systems controllers uses these information to authorize systems access and process individuals' call billing. Some of the system also comes with fault tolerance normally backup through tape or magnetic disks such as hard disk using either serial access mediums or direct access mediums some of the subscriber databases are so critical that they uh, so usually regularly do backups typically on tape cd-roms etc both serial access and direct access mediums to restore the information of the hlr if it fails the visitor location database now contains a subset of the information of the HLR and it contains similar information but only for the subscriber currently in the location area. So there's the VLR for every location area. The VLR reduces the overall number of queries that will be sent to the HLR and thus reduce network traffic. VLR are often identified by the location area code LAA, LAC for the area of the service. We also use these databases to identify where the mobile is located and where it is registered. As you can see here in location 1 and location 2, there is visitor location registers in both locations that are connected to the MSC and to the base station controllers and the base stations as well to the mobile network and they are one VLR located for that specific network. Let's examine some of the interfaces between the VLR and the HLR which is the D interface and the VLR between the VR will be the G interface and there's an interface between the mobile switching center and the visitor location register which is the B interface. Please note that we are not seeing any HLR directly connected to the mobile switching center. Equipment identity register very important register in a database that contains the identity of a telecommunication device hence the reason why it is that we always ask people to register SIM cards in their names. The ARS primary function will primarily use to identify wireless telephones that may have been stolen or have questionable uses, uses patterns that may indicate or indicate fraudulent use. We normally use this by using the INEI registration number which keeps track of the handset exactly where it is located. There are certain types of ERR2 as well. There's the whitelist, which holds good mobile users and those who register SIM cards in their names. There are blacklists for those who are denied services. And then there are also the gray that may be used for suspected of fraud or also being tested for validations. So there's an interface between the mobile switching center and the equipment identity register which is considered as the F interface. Some of these interfaces will be required for you all to learn and demonstrate the ability for examination purposes. The billing center which is separate all entirely keeps records of the billing information for example receive individual call records and other networks equipment and switching records and so on type of call services that are being identified, call waiting, 
type of mobile coverage too as well, postpaid versus prepaid, etc. The authentication center tool stores and processes information that is required to validate, as you spoke about, the authentication parts, and to also authorize users to enter into that specific network. There's also handles encryption too as well, different types of encryption mechanisms, MD5 versus SHAL1 on a specific network. There's also interfaces between them, between the HLR and the authentication center to make sure that the the handset or the several handsets are used. Then there are portable databases too as well, which we don't have in Trinidad and Tobago, for example. In Assam, we have the ability, not here, for some mobile networks to transfer numbers across the board. Like you have a digital number and you want to use it on a B mobile phone. We don't have those databases. We don't have that interconnectivity between both B mobile and Digicel. These are a number of portable databases that are known to other first world countries. Sprint, wireless, Verizon Wireless, and so on. And on the backbone of the network, we must know about the automatic transmission measures versus the FDDI types of systems for the backbone network that use high-speed communication networks for IP end-to-end -end transmissions and the capability of using different types of IEEE standards. Some of these things you would require to know for the end of term exams. So some of these backbone networks is a communication network that connects to the primary switches or nodes within the network that normally use. Actually, Flow have a very powerful backbone network that is currently used right now. And Digicel is trying to get into the network on the background too, especially to offer, not only offer mobile services, but offer services also on video. So we have the Adsynchronous Transfer Mode Network, the ATM technology, based of transferring data in cells in packets of fixed size. And then we have the Fiber Distributed Data Interface, which we all know the answer standard for protocols for fiber data and fiber optic cables. So this is a end-to-end -end diagram here to show you the interfaces that are connected diagram of all the base station controllers in mobile switching center that connects to the VLR. The VLR that connects to the loan HLR and the HLR that connects to the authentication center. We also talk about the gateway mobile switching center, the equipment identity register, base station controllers as well, base stations and the mobile device together with the public switching telephone network.